Two weeks ago, the U.N. released its landmark biodiversity report, and its findings left some scientists concerned. According to the study, humans are transforming the planet at an unprecedented rate, and nearly one million species on our planet are now at risk of extinction. Many of those are marine species, and some could be gone within the next 10 years. Now, some scientists are trying to save the world's oceans by tracking some of its largest creatures with a very unique technique. Tom Hansen has more from Gloucester, Massachusetts. Ian Kerr is on the hunt. Right, blow, dead ahead. To find the largest yeah. mammals on Earth. Yeah. There's a whale right beside us. Oh my gosh. Us. There we go. Whoa. Humpback whale, starboard side. The team zeroes in on its target and fires. Three, two, one. I'm going to try to get a fin blow if I can. What's my height? Right, six. Bingo. The scientists at Ocean Alliance call their drone the Snotbot yeah. because it collects material spouted from the whale's so blowhole. We've won the snot lottery. A gold mine of biological information. Kerr says it also reveals clues about the ocean's overall health under constant threat from climate change, pollution, and overfishing. How does a whale's health indicate how healthy the ocean is? Well, a whale is a, a mammal at the top of the food chain. And if you're at the top of the food chain, that means you're integrating everything below. You're eating the fish, you're eating the krill. Before drones, scientists relied on biopsies, which some viewed as disturbing to the whale. But with the help of the snot bot, this team is able to collect more data without the whale even knowing. Kerr developed the drone while researching whales after the massive Deepwater Horizon oil spill. How did you come up with the snot bot? Basically, I was, there's a whale right in front of me, and this cloud of whale snot like engulfed me, and it was stinky, and I'm like, hey, you know what? Stinky means biologically productive. I smell an idea. I smell an idea. I like that. The sound of success. Back at the Ocean Alliance headquarters, Kerr's team preps samples for the lab. It's a swimming pool of snot. Just one drop can yield yeah. spreadsheets of information, from gender to pregnancy to stress. Does it look healthy? Does it look skinny? And then we're getting the DNA, microbiomes, and hormones. But it's the unknown that excites Kerr the most. You know, cup half full here. I think there's enormous opportunities with these new technologies to educate people, engage people, and change the world. With this newest generation of research, he says the sky is the limit. And Tom Hansen is here on set to discuss this. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. So uh, you've explained what the snot bot is uh, and what Ian Kerr and his team are using it for. So what are they finding? Yeah, so as I said, they're collecting data on the pods of whales, their overall health, and they're basically drawing the line between the whale health and ocean health. And what they're finding isn't great, that these whales are under stress from a toxic combo of plastic debris, warming water temps, habitat loss, and I'm sure you've seen the headlines of whales washing ashore, yeah. for instance, with pounds and pounds of plastic inside of their stomachs. So these whales aren't doing very well, but Kerr hopes to raise awareness, and that is the key here. I mean, it sounds to me as if the only thing that can save the whales and ultimately the oceans is if people stop polluting. I mean, it seems sort of self-like explanatory, but they're finding that these animals are being stressed by what's happening in the oceans, and the idea would just be to tell people, hey, stop doing what you're doing or we're in danger of losing these. Yeah, to raise that awareness, and he hopes that that awareness can translate into policy change at the governmental level, that governments will cut back on ocean trash, they will cut back on man-made causes to habitat loss, and he hopes that we can turn a corner from that alarming UN report if we start with awareness, Vlad. That's the key. So the one thing I've always been curious about is uh, how fast, how easily it would be for the planet to um, uh, to heal itself or how quickly these whales the numbers could come back if we started to take those steps that they're hoping governments will take. Well, there have been other kinds of species restoration projects that have been very successful. So I'm sure Kerr would say that this is completely possible, but we have to turn that corner and cut back on the things that are affecting the whales. And of course, as Kerr mentioned, whales are at the top of the food chain. If, they're, if they aren't healthy, the ecosystem isn't healthy. So are they using drones uh, in other conservation efforts? Of course, yeah. So this is kind of an emerging trend. Elephants, orangutans, certain 
sorts of plants they are researching with drones. And the one thing that Kerr says excites him the most about this is the fact that drones are cheap and they don't require the same kinds of grants that typical scientific endeavors would require. So he calls this the democratization of science because the average person can participate in these large data mines. It's a really important story, really good storytelling. Thank you, Tom. Thanks. Appreciate it.